Good evening, my friends. My time, Central Standard Time, and Al's time, because he's not far from me. He's at one end of the state, and I'm at the other end of the state. And we got Mana, who's in New Zealand, I think, and Carly, who is in New Zealand. And one of y'all is in Australia, but I forgot which one of you. Lloyd used to be in Australia, and then he went to England, and then he went to Turkey, and then he went back to England, and now he's headed to the Arctic. That dude gets around. And I don't remember where all the rest of you's from. Half the time I don't even know where I'm at. <laughs> I'm getting out of here as soon as I can, No, going to turn this state over to Al, let Al handle it all by himself. All right, y'all, this evening we start in Ezekiel, and that's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. It's going to be hard for me not to preach, to not give you a bunch of commentary, but I'm going to try not to, but it's good, y'all. Before you go any further, stop right now pause this video and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to tutor you as you read along with me and as you listen to me. I don't want you listening to me. I don't want your eyes just scanning across a bunch of letters in front of you. I want the Holy Spirit to tutor you as you read so that you can get all the implications here and there's a lot of them there's a lot of good prophecy here a lot of it has been fulfilled some of it's in progress right now and before long there ain't going to be any prophecy left over friends I been researching last night I found that there and I knew all this at one time I just forgot but there's over 5,500 prophecies in the Bible. There's less than 500 of them left. And I don't know what all of those 500 are. I was surprised there was that many left. I, you know, it's happening so fast the last uh, 70, 80 years. And especially the last three years. I mean, just prophecy being fulfilled almost daily and some of the prophecy that's left a lot of it that's left will happen during the seven years of tribulation so you and I Christian brother and sister will not be here to see that being fulfilled and there's not a whole lot left that has to be done. I don't think there's any left that has to be done before the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church is a signless event. It is imminent. It could happen anytime. And then a lot of prophecy will just bam, 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 one right after another be fulfilled. And the world as we know it will end. God spoke the earth into existence and he's going to speak it out of existence totally and completely. God created every atom, <clears throat> every atom, and he can explode every atom. You know, man came up with a way to split atoms and to explode atoms. God can just tell them explode and it's all over everything the earth will be totally disintegrated it will be no more he will bring down a new heaven and a new earth where we will live where the bride of Christ will live for a thousand years with Christ as king hallelujah I can't wait for that and we my friends my true Christian friends, we get to see all of that. I'm anxious. I'm anxious. 
All right. And, you know, look at, just read the news and all this stuff going on. Earthquakes in the middle of oceans. Major, big earthquakes in the middle of oceans. Volcanoes erupting in the middle of oceans. Stuff that you never heard of before is happening. It's all signs of the end of the end. All right, let me stop my redneck rant here and get started in Ezekiel. And I'm going to do three chapters. Ezekiel is 48 chapters long, I think. I'm going to try to do three a day so we can knock it out in 16 days. Now it came to pass in the 30th year and the fourth month in the fifth day of the month as I was among the captives by the river of Chibor that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. This is the prophet of Ezekiel speaking. <clears throat> in the fifth day of the month which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebor, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Bam, y'all. So everything we read was penned by a man who's who had the hand of the Lord upon him. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance, the likeness of a man, and every one had four faces, and every one had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they had and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side, and they four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces and their wings stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined, one to another, and two covered their bodies. And they went every one straight forward, whither the spirit was to go, they went, and they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now... As I beheld the living creatures, behold, one will upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their work was likened to the color of a barrel, and they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. And when the living creatures went, 
the wheels went by them, and when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went, and when those stood, these stood, and when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over them, over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels, and the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above, and under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other, every one had two, which covered on this side, and every one had two, which covered on that side, their bodies. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great wander waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of an host, when they stood, they let down their wings. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above it. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, was so the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. Chapter 2 of Ezekiel. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. <clears throat> For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto thee them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou doest well among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like the rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, 
a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. <clears throat> Chapter 3 of the book of Ezekiel. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee, then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth honey, as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech, and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech and of a horrid language whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. <clears throat> but the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee for they will not hearken unto me. For they will not hearken unto... Oh, I just read that. For they will not hearken unto me. That's God speaking. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, <clears throat> fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. <clears throat> Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee receive in thine heart, and hear with thine ears, and go get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures, that touched one another and the noise of the wheels over against them and a noise of a great rushing. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the captivity of Tel Aviv that dwelt by the river of Chabar and I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at thine hand. And y'all, that is why we need to be obedient to the Lord when he tells us to go witness to somebody, to share the gospel with somebody. Because if we don't, and they die and go to hell, it's going to be at our hand. <clears throat> we need to be obedient to the Lord in everything. Yet, if thou warned the wicked, and he turned not from his wickedness, 
nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Did you get that? I'm going to read it again. This is verse 20 of chapter 3 of Ezekiel. When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him. This is God speaking. God lays a stumbling block before him. He shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered but his blood will I require at thine hand. God is serious, y'all. He's not playing games. We better not be playing games either. <clears throat> Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned also thou hast delivered thy soul. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. Then I arose, and I went forth into the plain, and beheld, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory which I saw by the river of Chabar, and I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered into me, and set me upon my feet, and spake with me, and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb. That means you can't talk, not ignorant, stupid, not that kind of dumb, but dumb like you cannot speak. And shall not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and then you won't be dumb anymore because you'll be able to speak again. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. That is the first three chapters of the book of Ezekiel. And friends, I'll be back when I'm back. I've, I've got something I need to share with you. I just, when God tells me to do it, I'll do it. I feel like I'm not really prepared right now, but soon I will be. I, I could share it right now, but I think it'll be better if I wait a little bit. So you'll get it when you get it. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. And all <clears throat> all my wandering brothers out there, y'all, find a home and settle down. I, I thought I had found one here. I love this house, but this isn't home. So I'm fixing to move. And y'all have moved more in the last three or four months than I've moved in the last three or four years, in the last 15 or 20 years. All right, y'all. God bless you. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I have fun with y'all. Y'all comment, and I'll comment back when I get a chance. I do love y'all. I do appreciate y'all. Subscribe to me if you're not already, and share me. Not Don't share me. Share Jesus through me with your friends and co-workers and school teachers and whoever else you may be in contact with. The world needs Jesus more than it needs anything else. And I share Jesus on this channel. This is his channel. I'm just his servant. All right, y'all got that. Talk to y'all later.